Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of The Netflix Show. As always, I'm your host, Scott Clark. Excited to be here. What is going on, everybody? Everybody having a good time? Uh, it is Tuesday. Hopefully, everybody had a great Labor Day weekend. I know it's a three-day weekend, or some people took off Friday, so they had a four-day weekend, which is great. But uh, today is Tuesday. I know everybody's back to the office or back to life. They're trying to figure things out like, oh, I had too much weekend. Um, I need to have some coffee to get through uh, through the morning. And that's okay. A lot of people are having a case of the Mondays on Tuesday. But the thing is, if, you ha- if, you're, ha- if you're experiencing that, you have to find something to get over the case of the Mondays as soon as possible because you don't want to be rolling into Wednesday and have lost a day to Labor Day and then a, a day to the case of the Mondays on Tuesday. So what's important to everybody is get rock and rolling. I've had my cup of coffee or two cups of coffee or whatever people like to say this morning. I've had a lot this morning. We're rocking and rolling. So good morning to everybody out there that's watching this. Good morning, Chrissy White. Good morning, Jim McCollin. Good morning, Laura Bullock. Good morning, Todd LaPierre. Look forward to seeing you tonight. Um, but today's episode is something I want to talk about. I see a lot of people struggling with this. And this is a case of the keeping up with the Joneses in the note business. And a lot of people like to try to judge their success by what they see other people having success with. And you can't do that. You literally have to stay in your own lane and judge your success by your actions, not what other people are doing. Now, let's just face it. A lot of people like to judge. You know, a lot of people talk a big game. As I said, there's a lot of pseudo stars out there, people that are out there talking about doing business, but they're actually not doing anything. Or they're trying to make a pivot on something, which, look, everybody takes a pivot at some point. But at one point, if you're not buying notes on a regular basis, you're not doing workouts, you're not talking about case studies that you're closing on this year, not five years ago, not three years ago, not over a year ago, deals you're closing on a regular basis, you really need to kind of just put your foot in your mouth and be quiet. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that, oh, I'm an expert at this, or I'm an expert at that, or I'm going to write a new book on deals that I've not closed in a couple of years. And you can't, that's it, great information. But what's unfortunate is if it's not up to the date, if it's outdated information and all of it, whether you believe it or not, five minutes after that stuff is written, it's outdated. Okay. Especially you get a month or three months or six months or 12 months, it's outdated. Now I'm, I'm one of the first ones to uh, talk about that. The book that we wrote, you know, how do you buy real estate at 40% off? It's about two years old. It's a little outdated. It's still got great information and there's nothing wrong with the information on it. But somebody called me up on, well, what about this? Or what about that? It's like, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. That was written two years ago. The market has changed. The market is constantly changing out there. And so that's one thing you've got to keep in mind, especially in life, is that markets change and things happen. And one of the things as you guys are are talking here this morning or you're you're watching here this morning, you're listening in on iTunes or Stitcher on the replay. First and foremost, thank you for listening always. Uh, And and secondly, thank you for those that drop an email, who make a phone call. I got a phone call from a a 19-year-old a uh, guy this morning in Atlanta who's getting things rock and rolling or starting things, looking for some advice. Hey, thank you so much for those phone calls. I love, love getting those phone calls and emails. But the biggest thing I was talking to that guy this morning about was like, listen, you're young. Don't get frustrated. All right. And one of the things I like always ask people is what's your background? He's like, well, I didn't go to college. I didn't want to take out student loans. I couldn't afford them. I'm like, hey, that's fine. No problem whatsoever. What are you focused on? He's like, I'm focused on wholesaling. I have some to deals. I said, well, what do you have a network? Uh, and I'm like, She's like, or he's like, no, I don't have a network. And I'm literally like, okay, that's fine. You've got to get out networking. you got to get out and meet up with people that are closing deals. You need to go to your local real estate club and talk to people on a regular basis about things. you got to talk about what's going on. you got to find the people that are closing deals on a regular basis and surround yourself with those individuals. And that's one of the great things that I love about our mastermind group is it's people literally closing deals, okay? Or it's people that are relatively new, that are in the process of getting deals and they're making offers or they're, they're literally putting, you know, putting things into getting things rock and rolling for them. That's great. But what's so sad is with social media these days, you see a lot of people talking and they're not doing things. And that's the biggest thing you, you sometimes have to figure out, you know, you have to look at what's your bullshit meter. How, how well effective is your bullshit meter? Is it working good? Because I'm like, seriously, it's like, I've had to remove myself from groups because I'm like, I just can't stand the amount of bullshit out there. Okay. Or I can't stand people saying one thing or bashing people for one thing. And then suddenly come around. I'm like, you're doing the same thing. 
you're doing the exact same thing. Don't give me a holier than thou. You're better than a lot of people aspect of things. And then you go down and do the same thing. It, that's hypocritical. And unfortunately, there are quite a few hypocrites out there. And I don't want anybody that's listening or anybody that's watching this here to start judging themselves based on what hypocrites are doing. Okay. What you have to realize, everybody out there, is judge yourself for where you are at. Everybody is in your, nobody else is in your shoes except you. Okay. And I don't care if, oh, it's been a year, I've only closed on two deals. Who cares? What's gone in that last year? Have you had deaths? Have you had to change things? Have you had to make a pivot or change what your focus is? And there's a learning curve to everything. So many people get upset about, well, I'm not having success in the first 60 days. Or I wanted to close my first deal by the end of the month. Well, what are you doing? Because how many offers are you making? If you've made a bunch of offers, great. Did you fall back up with those offers? Well, no. Okay. How many offers? Well, I only made four. Well, you need to make more offers. Or if you've got, here's some offers to look at, or if you've got, a, you know, hey, if you schedule a conference call with somebody, you miss that conference call, that's on you, not on somebody else, okay? So the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is I see, I see some different groups out there that just aren't doing anything, and that's unfortunate. That's just sad. In today's world, there's plenty of deals to be making offers on. There's plenty of deals that you can find out there with a variety of things, of networking, of, you know, going to events, of jumping online and seeing where people are buying things. There's so many different ways to find deals out there today, but unfortunately, so many people start looking like, oh, they get down the dumps like, ah, oh, I've only done a couple of deals. Well, what's going on in your life? Are you working a full-time J-O-B? With that, you're working a full-time J-O-B? Great. Just keep trucking along, okay? If you're full-time at what you're doing, if you're truly full-time as a real estate investor, what are you doing during your day, okay? Now, you have to be honest with yourself. This is one of the hardest things for people sometimes to do is you have to look yourself in the mirror and say this, am I doing the most productive thing each day? Before you go to bed, when you're sitting there brushing your teeth at night, you have to sit there and look at yourself. Am I doing, the, did I get the most done today that I could? And honestly, we're all at the end of each day, there's probably be some things we could have done a little bit differently. And that's for everybody across the board. Everybody across the board can do a little bit better. Even me. There's things that I could do a little bit better each day. Okay. There's things that I would not, I, I spend time on. There's like I'm watching games sometimes. Like last night I came in, was watching part of the Florida State game. Okay. I could probably be jumping on the line here. All right. Eh, what we do. It's not a big deal. What I'm trying to get is you have to be accountable to yourself and yourself alone. You can't be a keeping up the junk. Oh, that person's closed on 100 deals their first year. Well, their situation is completely different. Maybe they have more funding. Maybe they got more friends and family with money. It's a little bit warmer. Maybe they're in a better real estate investment club. Maybe they're not remote. Okay. There's a, you can't sit there and say, well, this, I, I feel like a shithead because I've only, I've got nothing done where I want to be. And this person's just taking off. Just take a freaking chill pill. In the words of Aaron Rodgers, R-E-L-A-X, just relax. Okay. Just relax. Just relax. Don't get bent out of shape. Don't get chilled out. Like this weekend was opening weekend of college football, right? Everybody's all excited about college football, the, the roads of playoff. And I heard somebody say, man, you hate to see, you, you got to see people chill out a little bit and quit rewarding or awarding the Heisman Trophy after the first week of the season. So that's 13, 14 more weeks to go. And they got these teams that lost opening weekend because you, you know what happened? You have 50% are winners and 50% are losers right now. First weekend, half the teams won, half the teams lost. Okay, that's a statistical fact. <laughs> Okay, half the teams won, half the teams lost. How do you recover from that? And the reason I love that kind of that analogy is you look at yourself. How are you doing each day? Are you winning the day or are you losing each day? If you're busy constantly looking at what other people are doing and, and, and looking and looking and looking and looking and looking what everybody else is doing, you're not looking at your own stuff. You've got to take the actions on a daily basis to get things done. And that's this is a very simple business. It's a very simple thing to do. You're making offers, you're talking to asset managers, you're doing email blasts out. To them. It's a very, very simple business. It's just doing rinse and repeating. Rinse and repeating. There's a lot of talk with people. There's a lot of moving parts that can go on once you've closed on a deal. I think we can all agree to that. And you have to look at, are you doing it yourself? Are you outsourcing things? Are you at a spot where you need to outsource, but you haven't hired an assistant to do that? There are so many different moving parts to things. And when you look at what a lot of people have done. And so let's let's give you, I, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit here. Like uh, a lot of you like to talk about our, our buddy Wayne Snell, who's done an amazing job, who's out hiking the Alps and told his boss to take this job and shove it, okay? 
Closed 300 deals. Well, Wayne didn't close on a lot in his first year. Okay. He closed on a couple, but Wayne didn't hit accelerate until he brought on Natalie, Natalie Patton, who Natalie is just a freaking due diligence freaking expert. I mean, she is anal to a T and an I when it comes to looking at assets or finding things wrong in files, stuff like that. Wayne's business was on steady growth and he was doing things, a lot of things after hours. This guy was still working a full-time job and him and I would have conference calls or exchange text messages or jump on the horn after hours between 7 p.m. and 2 a.m. Sometimes it was between midnight and 2 a.m. depending on where he was at in the world. Okay. Sometimes he was waking up early if he was over in Europe or Australia or we were talking late when he was getting out of a, an event here in Vegas or something like that. But he maximized his time and focused on what he wanted with his goals. And eventually he found something to line himself and he had a lot of exponential growth. Okay. He, the first year was kind of slow and, and Wayne had some things happen to him. He was converting from basically fixing flips and rentals into the no space. So there's a lot of transition goes with that. So for those of you guys that are out there struggling, you guys are out there like, oh, it's the end of the year and I haven't accomplished anything. You know, we talked uh, a couple episodes ago the two episodes ago, I think we did a Friday morning episode about finish 2018 strong. Okay. And if I can give you any advice out there, here's the advice that I would give you. Learn to hit the unfollow button. Learn to hit the unsubscribe button. Now I know writing a podcast is probably the worst advice I could give. I'm not, you know, some people need to stop listening and start doing it. And I only say that because literally two years ago, I was a, I'm was i still a very big Gary Vaynerchuk fan, okay? Gary V, the Ask Gary V show, was one thing I would jump on every morning and listen to for half hour to hour. And at the point, I was like, I got like through like 20 episodes. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm losing my day. Come on, I like Gary V. He's got a lot of great content. I think you guys will agree to that as well. But I had to the point where I had to say, I had to unfollow. I had to unsubscribe for a period. I was like, he's not going anywhere, all right? But I need to put some of the things that I'm listening to, I'm digesting. I need to judge myself, my own lane, <coughs> and, and take things. And Steph and I have con right, regular conversations about things, about staying in our lane. Because we see people uh, doing things out there. They're replicating things. Or as Steph likes to say, they're stealing our ideas. I'm sorry. I'm just joking. Right, Steph? Mm -hmm. Steph says good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Right? Uh, <laughs> Rosie, say good morning. Hi. Yeah, there you go. Rosie's there. Great. Um, we're in Ratland this morning. We know. Yes. Ratland. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but the thing is, that I always say, look, we, st we stick in our lane because a lot of people will have pseudo success. They'll talk a big game. All right. And what's always funny is when you see somebody's message starts to change, they start having like, oh, we're going to do these long sales, sales letters. And I'm like, oh, I hate those. We're just going to stick to what we do. Stick to what we do because we do what we do, I think, better than anybody else does. And you see a lot of people that are, okay, we're going to do this, and 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 we're going to give everything away, but then we're going to charge, and then we're going to do this. And I just laugh because it's like, look, you can't be everything. The reason we are where we're at today is because we've got 10 years success, 10 years of track record, okay? 10 years of showing up on a daily basis and getting things done and not giving a shit what so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so are doing. I know where I'm at. I know what my lane is, okay? I know I'm in the, uh, you know, the toll lane because I don't mind being the toll lane to get a little bit faster where I need to be. I'm willing to do that. Others are in the slow lane, and that's okay. You're in the slow lane. You're just coming off, getting on the highway. You're trying to figure things out. You want to make sure that the semi-truck doesn't run you over, okay? You want to make sure you don't merge into somebody. You're checking your, 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 your rear view and your, you know, front mirror or front window to make sure everything is going well. The thing you got to realize, everybody, is we all have different engines that go. We are all on different models of car, okay? different V8s, V6s. Some of you guys are running like a two-cylinder engine. You're like on a Briggs & Stratton engine. Uh, what I'm trying to get at here is if you're running in a, like a, a Pinto, you can't judge your how fast you're going by somebody who's an F1 Formula 1 race car. Okay? But unfortunately, a lot of us do. Oh, so-and-so did this. Man, that's awesome. Okay? They probably failed a bunch of times before you got there. They probably got lapped by a few people before they got there. Okay? They probably got almost run over by a few people because they or they had to pull over for a pit stop and change their tires to flip on gas. Or they had to take a break along the way. Okay? And 
we see a lot of this in podcast podcasting. A lot of people are like, oh, I got, yeah, I got a thousand downloads for the month or I've only got like 5,000 downloads for the first three months. I'm like, well, what are you doing? It's the same thing like when it comes to how many offers you're making, how many deals are you closing? How many counters are you getting back? You have to look at it. And if you're sitting around waiting for somebody to respond for you, get on the phone. If you can, go direct. If you can, make some offers. Just get things moving and you'll pick up momentum. You'll get that little engine I could. And then before long, you'll be like, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And then before too long, you're burning rubber going around that racetrack. You're kicking butt, taking names, doing your own thing, your own goals, your own fin date. What's a fin date? Your financial independence number date. What number, when day do you hit that? Okay. And Laura Blunk says, OMG, I'm a 59 Studebaker. <laughs> hey, a 59 Studebaker is pretty sharp. Okay. And once you get that thing moving, it's rock and rolling. You've got a lot of momentum with you, Laura. You've been a little slow. You closed a couple of deals, got a little slow, got sucked into believing, oh, I can't do anymore. Well, yeah, you can. You found that. You need a little bit of shakeup. You need a little bit of a why. Like, oh, crap, I really got to get rock and rolling. And you've done it. You've taken those actions. Okay. That's why Laura Blunk on here is the most improved note investor of the year for my mastermind group. Because she really, year one was a little slow. Year two, she's kicked it into high gear. She's literally dropped dropped the hammer. She's turned on the nitrous oxide and is getting rocking and rolling up there. So biggest thing I want to ask you guys out here is what is your struggle? What is, for those that are watching out here, what is the join? What is your biggest struggle? Okay. And what is holding you back? I see a lot of people out there like, oh, I can't do that because so-and-so is doing that. Okay. What's so-and-so doing? Okay. You know, and I see, oh, this guy looks like they're really killing it. And I laugh because that's one of the big things we always get from people. Man, your marketing is killing it. You're everywhere. I'm like, really? I'm not everywhere. I have a couple of websites that if I press one thing, it shares it across everywhere. So I don't have to worry about going and posting to 60 sites after I get finished with this. It's literally already automatically done. There's some tools that I use to make things done. But it's also the thing I look at every day is what do I have to do each day to get in front of our audience so I can go and focus on things. Because when I get off the phone, I've ever been on the phone with my asset manager this morning, all right, talking with her about some assets. I've already been on the phone. Uh, I got a phone call on our insurance company and a couple of things. I got a, a phone call on my trainer. And I'm literally traveling. We're actually, like I said, we're in Ratland here at Disney. You know, for a lot of people when they travel, it shakes them up where they're not able to work. Well, the beautiful thing about the note business is you can work from anywhere. All right. So I've been up since 747 this morning, be precise. Uh, dropped Giz off at his job this morning, ran some errands, prep for tonight. We've got a, a great meeting tonight going on here in Orlando, the Orlando Note Closure Show. Big shout out to the guys over at Paper Stack. Dot com for hosting us, Todd LaPierre for being the um, uh, promoter or the organizer of the Orlando No Closer Group. So we're excited to be speaking tonight in Orlando. But running around getting stuff ready for that and just literally getting a good start on the day. Not letting the case of the Mondays drift into Tuesdays, okay? We've got a lot of stuff to get done. We've got a lot of things that we got to get taken care of, not just only for what we got planned this weekend, but also for what we got going on in business, in life, the next couple of days, you know, um, we can't always just take drop off, take five days off, and disappear from the world. We've got a lot of moving parts, right, Steph? Uh huh. Steph's uh -huh. like, when's it going to end? <laughs> <laughs> She's like in the shower saying, "Calgon, take me away." <laughs> okay. Some people are like, "What's Calgon?" Um, yeah, exactly. So that's the biggest thing I, I think you guys. And gals out there that are watching, that are listening here, is that if you find yourself comparing you to somebody else, comparing your no business to somebody else, there's a couple ways to find out exactly what As our good buddy Jason Bible likes to say, when somebody's saying, hey, let's show up with your HUD ones and see what's going on with a HUD one. Let's see how many deals you close. Hey, you show up with the assignments, show up with the deeds of trust. How many deals are you offering? How are the contracts going? Okay. Or, you know, Download a copy of your servicing file. I mean, we we do that all the time long. Actually, I got a report coming this morning too from Shop Day and stuff. So 
Jim McMullen says self-discipline, setting a schedule and sticking to it is one of the things, his biggest struggle. And, and Okay. So I totally get that, Jim. And so, Jim, um, it's difficult. I, th- I think you're still working, too, if I remember correctly. So the thing you have to realize is sometimes time blocking is one of the best things for, for, for self-discipline. Okay. Setting a schedule and sticking to it. And I, I will tell you this. You're going to fail at time blocking. Time blocking is great. It's a great tool, but everybody fails at it. How do I know this? Because I failed myself. Okay. There are things, this time blocking is not the effect. And staff will vouch for it. Like I'm constantly asking, okay, what's the schedule? What's going on? What do we got to be by where? So I can block my schedule to get things done that I need to get done. Right. All, you can hear yeah, but one of the things you have to keep in mind, everybody, too, is she's running her schedule for a variety of things that are different than mine. So I have to constantly, okay, I know we've got to go do this. I know we've got to go do this later. What's the schedule for this? So let me figure out my best time. So I like, I know, like, okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a lot of work. Tuesday night, we've got the meetup group here, which big th- kudos to Todd for rescheduling a week early. Then Wednesday night, I'm going to the local Florida, Central Florida real estate meetup group just to go. Might be there for an hour, might be there for three hours. Who knows? Okay. But I'm trying to put that in so I can maximize work. But then I also got the podcast here to schedule. I've also got other things that go on back home, talking with people. Um, Shannon, marketing and her rock and roll this morning. I got to give her a phone call here in a few minutes. So the thing you're going to realize is, is Jim, you're not going to be able to literally schedule everything down. What you have to do is, and this is the thing that I like the, the best of doing before I go to bed. I make a mental list of what's the three big things I got to get done the next day. Okay. Three big things. Don't make you a to-do list of a hundred things because I hate to-do lists. What I'm talking about is a big rocks list. Okay. So, and the thing is, if you've got three big rocks or maybe one big rock or two big rocks or four big rocks, focus on the thing that's going to be the most difficult first. If you can get that out of the way done first and foremost, it'll make the other stuff go a lot easier. And then if you still, it's a big project and it takes all day to get done and you got, you're working on that you're going to feel much more accomplished. Like I, I'm halfway through the big project or I'm halfway through getting this done. Okay. You'll feel great. Too. But if you do a lot of little small things, you can psych yourself out and think you've got a lot done when you really, when you've got 20 little five minute duties, you really are still behind the eight ball because you've got this big rock doing. So biggest thing I can tell you with that, Jim, is focus on big rocks and then carve two or three hours out if you need to, if you've got the time to get that done. If you're working full time, you may not have two to three hours, you may have an hour. So you've really got to maximize that hour. And the one of the best things I can tell you is if you need to, you're struggling with self-discipline and, and setting a schedule and sticking to it, find an accountability partner. Find somebody either through the mastermind group or local or WCN crew, uh, Facebook group, or some of your local meetup or RIA and be accountable to them. Decide, hey, let's hold each other accountable. What do you want to accomplish in the next 30, 60, 90 days? Okay. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. What do you want to accomplish in the next 30, 60, 90 days? Okay. And work through the plan. The reason I'm not talking the full year here is, trust me, if you put a goal out for the year, you're going to probably adjust your numbers about halfway through. And a lot of people are doing that right now. They're literally adjusting their numbers where they want to accomplish in 2018 because they haven't got started. They haven't done anything or they've gotten sidetracked. They're not near as far along as they'd like to be. Okay. So, like I said, if you're struggling with self-discipline, say that schedule, let's take to it. Put that schedule up somewhere where you can see it every day. Um, if you guys are struggling with marketing, like a lot of people are doing, you know, download a copy of the 30-30 matrix. Okay. Take that spreadsheet with the 30 items across the top or take a spreadsheet and put the 30 things along the top and then figure out what days you can get the stuff done and focus on that. That's your list. That's your checklist of, of things that you got to get done or things that you have to be done through the month. But that's a, a blaring reminder, okay? If you want to put it on the TV or put it on the mirror or put it on the fridge or put it on your office or your laptop so when you flip it open, you see things, okay? I've had a lot of people that use the, their little mouse pad on the laptop. They put their goals. Here's what I got to do today. Here's what I got to get done, okay? Here's a reminder. Here's a photo. What am I working towards? And work towards it, okay? Don't beat yourself up. Okay, because we're all going to fail. We all fail on a daily basis. Everybody does. But focus on your own lane. Focus on what you can get done. Don't worry about what anybody else does. Nobody's walking in your shoes. All right. 
Jim, glad to help you. He says, great nuggets, three big rocks, accounting partner. Thanks. Not a problem, Jim. Not a problem. And if you, uh, I would say this, if there's a couple big things that you got, if you're looking for, Jim, drop me an email with the big three things are, and I'll maybe know somebody who's dealing with the same issues. I can match you up with somebody. Okay. I can match you up with somebody who's interested in being that. Now we're interested in doing something with someone you guys can work together. And that's one of the big things. Sometimes divide and conquering is an easier thing. Two people can get more done than one person. Okay. Now I'm not a big believer in like, oh, let's get 10 people to come together to buy our first note. I don't think that works. I think the, you have people that don't want to take, you need a leadership role on that and other people don't want to do it. Like, you can have too many chiefs and not enough Indians, too many cooks and not enough chefs directing the way. Okay. But two people, three people, you guys can make a little mini <coughs> mastermind and knock some things out to make things, get things rock and roll. Our, our uh, Gabe, our buddy Henry Lee and Gabe, uh, what's Gabe's last name? Right? Gabe. What's Gabe's last name? Yes. Gabe Cass. Yeah, Surf City Investments. I'm a bank the only guy. I got too many Gabes. I think Gabriel Ramirez, high school guy. But uh, Gabe Cass and Henry Lee, two of our mastermind students, they found that they live pretty close to each other in Southern Florida or Southern California. And they got together and they were breaking down tapes together during the week. They were working on assets together. Um, when they came to the mastermind, they were working on stuff. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great partnership of people to work together on some things. They came together, they divided and conquered, and they, they got a lot further off because they had a support system. They had somebody there to keep them motivated. They had somebody there that when one person was having a down day, the other person was a good day, and they fed off of each other. And those two people got a lot more done than just one person by themselves. Okay. So, hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, Gail, good look forward to seeing you tonight. Hey, Israel, good to see you, bud. See people out there joining in, listening and watching, which is great stuff. Great stuff. What other issues are you struggling with? Okay. Um, one of the things, too, you have to keep in mind, if you see people talking a big game, but you don't see them actually doing the big game. All right. This is this has been around. Oh, this has been around for a couple of years. People talk a big game like, oh, I am a big marketing expert. Oh, hey, I'm a big no closing expert or closing a lot of deals. Like, where are the case studies? Um, what are the, what are the things? I don't see you marketing. I don't, I look at your social media profiles. I don't see anything. Okay. Or you're like a whisper. You're like smoking the wind. Okay. Uh, you gotta be very careful. Who you take advice from if They're not doing the things they're telling you to do. You have to be very careful. Uh, Laura Blunt says, what should we hire out first? Oh, I love this question. This is a great thing. Okay. Uh, one of the best advice I can give you is the first hires you should have, you should hire an assistant. And I'm not talking somebody who's in your family. I'm not talking about sister, brother, son, or daughter, because they will flake on you. Okay. They'll have their own agenda and they won't do things like they should be. They'll, they'll, they'll flake out. So the best thing you can do is often hire somebody out to handle the things that are below your pay grade. Okay. Um, what I'm talking about that is below your pay grade is figure out what you want to make on an annual basis. Okay. This is something we did at the last match. We did it at most of every workshop. So if you take, uh, let's just use some really easy numbers. Say you want to make 10 grand a month. Okay. That's what you ultimately want to make. Okay. Or that's 120 a year. A lot of people want to make six figures or people want to make uh, 60 grand in a month or a year. Sorry. So 60 grand. If you never made a hundred grand, it starts you at 60 because before you get to hundred, you've got to hit make 60 along the way. So 60 grand divided by 12 months is five grand a month. All right. You divide five grand by four weeks. What's that come down to? $1,250 a week. OK, twelve hundred fifty dollars divided by how many hours a week are you going to work? Forty hours is pretty normal. So twelve fifty divided by 40 comes to what? It's about 30 plus bucks an hour. So what you have to look at, Laura. It, 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 it's funny. You, you, I just noticed this. You spelled hair, uh, higher wrong and air. Which I mean, makes me think, should you, what should you get Julian to do first, right? <laughs> so thing is, if you want to make, if you, if you want to be making, like I said, 60 grand a year, that means you need to value your time at at least $30 an hour. So anything that you can outsource or hire out to do less than 30 bucks an hour, like admin stuff, you have an assistant comes in for 10, 12, 15 bucks an hour. These days, you've got to at least probably pay 15 bucks an hour just because otherwise they can flip burgers for the most part. Okay, or less than that. So keep that in mind where you're at too. So <clears throat> hire out first things that you are below your pay grade. All right, like you should, if you can, if you got an assistant, 
They should probably handle your paperwork, printing that, making sure you sign everything at the end of the day. They should help you handle the recording. Maybe they're the ones running to FedEx. Maybe they're the ones that run and make deposits to the bank, okay? They're the ones that go through your mail and organize your mail, okay? Those are things that you can hire out at cheap, cheap rate, cheaper rates for the most part. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, what other things you'd have them do? Well, you could maybe hire a virtual assistant to help you with some marketing, okay? Or that one of the things that a lot of people aren't doing, which I think is a huge opportunity that most people are missing on, people aren't going online and pulling lists of IRA investors, self-directed IRA investors. That's an easy thing to do. It's easy to hire a virtual assistant to do, okay? That's what I'd be paying somebody to do. Jump online, pull lists, show them exactly how to pull the lists, take a little bit of time, film a video of you doing it, so you can walk them through there in the counties that you wanted to pull in and do that. That's an easy thing. And then what you do with them, here's what you do. You have them pull the information and then you have them put the marketing piece together. Now, maybe you design the postcard, design the letter, but then they're the ones that are going getting it printed. Maybe they're doing a mail merge. Okay. Maybe they're the ones that are running to FedEx to get those. They're the ones stuffing envelopes. If you're going to do direct a mail piece out to IRA investors, or they're the ones that are pulling the, 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 the stickies together, the peeled stick. Uh, address labels that go out to them. You have them do that and you give them a, a, a timeline. Because when the worst thing you can do is hire somebody and not give them a timeline to get things like, hey, here's what I need you to get done by today. Okay, this and this and this and this. Those are little things that you can do to do things. But that's that, you can have them do your direct mail. You can have them doing, reaching out to asset managers. You can have them literally helping you with travel. You can have them doing a lot of, literally, Maybe you need not wash clothes. Maybe you need to just throw all the dirty clothes in a trash bag and then have them to go drop it off of the cleaners, okay? Because literally, it's so much easier to have your laundry done in four minutes than it's done all day. What I mean by four minutes, it takes you two minutes to drop it off and two minutes to pick it up from a washeteria. If you take even your laundry detergent and drop off with it, they'll wash it how you want to wash it. And you can come back and pick it up and you know what? It's all folded all nicely. It's all like all together and you know what? You don't have to track down socks. <laughs> Who likes putting socks together? Nobody does. Okay. There's always like one freaking sock missing. Okay. Where is that damn thing? And you'll find it like in somewhere else in the corner or behind your dryer about 12 months later as you're cleaning out the back of your dryer. But what I'm trying to get at is take the things that, like I said, eat up your day, you find yourself doing, okay, that just bog irritates you. And outsource it. So, like, it's one of the things I do. Like, I don't like. I don't even have a printer in my office. I literally email it to uh, staff in the other office. Like, hey, print this. Bring this in here. I'll get it signed at four o'clock. And then we need to get this a FedEx label to go out for this. Or we need to drop this in the end of the day, right, Steph? I do that religiously, don't I? All the time. Okay. Um, the thing is, you want to empower your employees or your staff and allow them to make mistakes. A lot of people, when you start bringing on somebody, they're scared to make a mistake, so they're at a standstill. And they're sometimes scared to ask questions, all right? So you've got to basically give them something to do, come back and check on them, give them some time to make some mistakes, and coach them, all right? Coach them, because they won't do as good as job. They, trust me, they won't do nearly as good as job if you don't spend some time coaching. If you let them expect them to get it all on themselves, no matter their experience, you have a little time to coach now. I'm very blessed. I've had people that do sometimes do a better job than me. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. We're like, great job with that. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, another thing you could have them do is you could literally have people come in and spend time on LinkedIn for you. Update your profile or update your connections or go out and find more people for you to connect on LinkedIn. That's a great thing to do. Upload your, take your list and upload them from different networking events you've gone to. Hey, go out here on LinkedIn, connect this or add this or Hey, here's the properties we've closed. Take the photos of these properties and let's create some flyers for them. Okay. That's a, an easy thing to do. Um, that is very, very helpful across the board for the most part. So hopefully that's helpful for you out there, Laura. Um, you can have them spend time writing, creating things. Hey, take this, create this new deal. Cheat stuff like that. All right. Questions, comments, concerns out there, everybody? Like, like I said before, we all have different strengths. We all have different weaknesses. If you, if somebody's got a particular strength in something, I'll give you an example. A lot of people are like, oh, your marketing kicks butt. Like, I know our marketing does a great job. Don't hold yourself like, oh, I can't do what Scott does, so I'm not going to do it. No, don't do that, all right? You have your own tribe. You have your own database that you're reaching out. You have your own network. You have your own 
what's the word? And your, your own system, your own solar system of people that revolve around you. Do what you can for you. Do what you do, okay? Be all that you can be. Don't be all that Scott can be or Steph can be or anybody else can be. Be the best investor that you can be. If you stick to it, it'll eventually happen is you people will start take, paying attention. They'll start noticing, start doing, seeing you do some great things. And what's the beautiful thing is there's so many, so many crumbs. There's so many different pieces of crust in this big note, distressed asset, distressed mortgage game that there's plenty of room to go around. You don't have to be a $50,000 megawatt blowtorch. Okay. You could be a 5,000 blowtorch. You'd be a 500 blowtorch, whatever you want to be. You can be the best person that you can be, the best investor that you can be by doing the things you want to on a daily basis. Because let, let's face it, we all struggle. We all got bills to pay. We all have different things that come and go, okay? On a regular basis, there's all these little things that we deal with. And sometimes I'll have an answer, but that's one of the best things I love about masterminding, like our mastermind. I picked up a couple tricks this last weekend, not this weekend, but the weekend before from our mastermind. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, I'd never heard about that website. Let me use that now. Never heard that. Let me try that site, okay? Just be open and network and find an accountability partner who has the same goals in mind. What you don't want is a accountability partner who is flaky and flakes off on you. It always has excuses for why things aren't working. Focus on your, focus in your own lane. Try to find somebody who's in, in a similar lane and just be accountable, be truthful. Because ultimately, everybody, we're all responsible for where we are at today. We are all responsible for where we're at today based on the decisions that we've made. Nobody's held a gun in their head. Nobody has done other things like that to deter you from success. Okay, you are the only person that is going to make or break you, not somebody else. And you know, I don't want to hear your country western song. Oh, my grandmother died, or I got divorced, or you know, my wife or husband or both of them were cheating on me. <laughs> Maybe it's a you know, you know, or I didn't get any deals accepted, or that doesn't work. Everything's too pricey. Well, you know what? It's too pricey. Go find some more sources. I've seen that pop. You know, oh, it's too pricey. Everything's overpriced. Well, who are you bidding on? If you're only bidding on four or five assets. You're not doing enough work, okay? Uh, Gail Villanova, love your hashtag. Make note megawatt blowtorch. You might have to get a T-shirt with that, okay? Uh, but guys, oh yes, I love Jim's quote: "All hat, no cattle." Yeah, that's a, definitely a Texas quote. Big hat, no cattle. We see that in Texas. We call that for people that talk a big game, but they have they have nothing. They got a big hat, no cattle to back it up, and uh, go back it up. Trust me, guys and gals, if you're out making offers, working through things, saying stuff on a regular basis, give yourself time to get warm. Give yourself time to get that warm-up lap around the, the track so that you can see where you're going. And trust me, you're going to fail switching things. You're going to fail at time block. You're going to fail at getting things done. The best advice I can give you is don't beat yourself up and make it an extra day of the Mondays. Smile, sh shake it off, stand up and get back in the race, get back in the game on a day-in, day-out basis, all right? So that's all that I've got for you guys today. Go out, make something happen. Kick Tuesday square in the teeth and go make some things happen out there. And uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening, as always.